Peter Zelmayev is the executive director of the Eurasia Democracy Initiative and a specialist on post-Soviet states. He is near the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, and joins us now over Skype. Sir, thank you so much for joining us here uh, sure. on Al Jazeera. First of all, just give us an idea of, from what you can understand and see, of what the situation is like uh, in and around Kyiv. Well, the situation, yes, definitely. There's definitely, uh, there's, uh, I wouldn't say a full-blown humanitarian crisis, but definitely it is nearing that. Uh, the Russian forces have been steadily um, trying to encircle the capital. They're facing their own set of uh, problems with that. Um, uh, but the goal, apparently, of the invading force is to s surround the city, to lay siege. Uh, to it, uh, to the capital, and basically bring its residents to their knees. Um, you know, there's still probably uh, at least half of the population of the city remaining, and we're talking uh, well over a million people. Uh, over a million people uh, have already left Ukraine, and it's already one of the largest such humanitarian crises in Europe's post-European history. But let me uh, let me tell you, folks, despite all the privation. Um, all the uh, savagery that Ukrainians are witnessing uh, from the invaders, and we're talking about cluster bombs being used, other banned ordinance being used uh, in, you know, against Ukrainian cities, against residential areas. Ukrainians have shown incredible determination to fight for their country, something that Vladimir Putin did not clearly, did not expect. Uh, from your experience, both, of course, of being in the area and knowing it well, and also your professional uh, experience, I mean, what do you fear the plan uh, of Russia will be when it comes to Kyiv? Well, it's uh, your guess is as good as mine. It's a question that's in everyone's uh, mind. It's, uh, you know, uh, Vlad Mr. Macron, the French president, uh, today spoke with Vladimir Putin, and he walked away very discouraged. He said that Vladimir Putin still thinks that he's going to be able to control all of Ukraine. So despite Russians, uh, Russian assurances that the occupation of Ukraine is not in their, uh, is not their goal, uh, we cannot uh, take them at their words. Uh, if you remember, uh, Putin and uh, his uh, acolytes claimed up until the very day of the invasion that they never planned to invade at all. Uh, and it happened. Now they're claiming the uh, occupation is not their plan and can we really trust them? No. Uh, so the, uh, I, the idea uh, of Vladimir Putin is to probably install a puppet regime in uh, Kiev uh, that would be more pliable to Moscow, more loyal to Moscow, and to prevent Ukraine from ever attaining any sort of military strength and from ever contemplating uh, joining EU or NATO. But once again, uh, once he achieves the goal of somehow uh, of some military, you know, uh, control of, of the capital. How is he going to deal with this restive population, the population of people uh, who will hate Russia, who will hate Putin for the rest of their life? I cannot uh, begin to uh, tell you the answer to that question. It's uh, it's 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 very difficult to uh, come up with a plausible scenario where an occupying force, the size of Russian force, which is large but not large enough to occupy a country of 30. Five million people. I mean, you mentioned that the resolve of the Ukrainian people, especially in Kiev, has not wavered. Um, uh, the country, Ukraine, has been promised military assistance by Western countries, not military action, but military assistance. But I guess timing is of the essence. What do uh, Ukrainians resisting the Russian advance need right now uh, from the West? Well, obviously, uh, we're just uh, sort of. Uh, um, uh, uh, commenting on the humanitarian crisis we already touched on, obviously, there needs to be uh, some kind of a green corridor and several green corridors provided for, including for residents of Kiev and also um, that, 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 that means evacuating them and uh, providing food. Uh, for those who do not want to leave, and food for the fighters, obviously. Um, that is going to be, once again, increasingly difficult as the Russians try to encircle Kiev and other major cities. Uh, uh, secondly, and 
but perhaps most importantly when it comes to the uh, uh, Ukrainian ability to defend themselves. More ammunition, obviously, uh, and Europe has already so, uh, shown that it's willing to do that. Germany, uh, for the very first time since World War II, decided to arm uh, another country so openly, especially a country fighting Russia. This was a watershed moment. Germany is sending upwards of 2,000 uh, rockets, Zemla rockets, which were actually manufactured by the Soviet Union. It's the irony of ironies, you know. Uh, Germany is using uh, the old Soviet era ammunition for Ukrainians to fight Russians. Bari Akhtar, the Turkish drone, has proven to be indispensable. The Ukrainians have about 20 of them. They need at least 100. Uh, each one of them costs $4 million, a significant amount of money. But the worldwide support of Ukraine has been so massive that it seems like countries are willing to spend all kinds of money and send all kinds of uh, weapons to, uh, to, uh, to help Ukrainians, because they have seen that Ukrainians are able and are willing to fight the invader. I mean, you're speaking to us, obviously, as an eyewitness and, and a local uh, resident. You're also a political commentator and a specialist on post-Soviet states. So based on your, I guess, professional uh, knowledge, what do you think are the weaknesses that, that, that the Russians will have in the current situation that the Ukrainians could exploit? They have already uh, shown these weaknesses, uh, weaknesses uh, for all the world to see. They, the army uh, has uh, been uh, exposed as quite ill-prepared for the sort of task at hand for the invasion of a massive country the size of Ukraine. Uh, the equipment was, uh, in many cases, uh, outdated, and uh, the Pentagon, for example, experts have looked at it and were surprised that the second largest army uh, in the world uh, is really you know, um, is being exposed in front of our eyes as something other than what we thought about it. Uh, I think the, an even more glaring um, error on the part of the invading force was the failure of intelligence. It seemed that Vladimir Putin has uh, been uh, delusional about the Ukrainians' will to fight. He has probably honestly bought into the idea that Ukrainians are under some kind of a rule by a Nazi junta, as the Russians have claimed, despite the fact that uh, our president is Jewish. And for, for a while, we had both the prime minister and the president, Jewish, the only other country other than Israel to have that situation. So it is ironic that, you know, uh, an FSB and a KGB man like Vladimir Putin would miscalculate so grossly uh, the, you know, the idea of who Ukrainians are, that Ukrainians do believe and do know that they're not the same people as the Russians, which Vladimir Putin believes. So on many, on all levels, Russians uh, have been rash, have been unprepared, uh, and uh, as a result, they've been sort of open to ridicule by uh, by the entire world. You know, in a way, it, it brings a sense of kind of schadenfreude. But on the other hand, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's probably causing a lot of grief because Putin has gotten enraged. And therefore, we've seen all this indiscriminate shelling and this increasingly illegal tactics, war crimes being committed because Vladimir Putin is clearly desperate. His uh, idea of a, a short and victorious war in Ukraine has been a miserable failure. Peter Zelmayev from the Eurasia Democracy Initiative speaking to us from near Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital. Sir, thank you so much for speaking to us for your time.